We're here this morning in the uh, Dagger Tools classroom, and we're going to talk about the the uh, features and the function on our Dagger Tools SH02PR foot activated shrinker stretcher. And uh, I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the the unique features of the Dagger Tool shrinker. Uh, first of all, we have our uh, power head assembly or a head assembly. We have the deepest of the reaches in the market at nine and three eighths of an inch depth. We have six inches of depth in this direction, um, which is by far the largest of any of the stationary or manual machines. We have a one piece lever design for our foot activated machine, um, which allows us to produce in excesses of uh, 6,500, 6,800 pounds of force uh, under any given environment as far as operationally. Um, we have a short stroke adjustment. Uh, we use the Lancaster style uh, jaws in our machine. Again, because they're small, they allow greater access. And of course, relative to that opening, um, there have been people over the years that have uh, kind of debated whether you need that type of a reach, but you can see in some cases where I can see how quick and how deeply I can reach into a part with that added depth or drop and obviously the depth of the machine opening. So there are some benefits. There are some occasions where even a higher crowned region of a panel is still may have a challenge. Though I can get into it, I may not be able to get through the radius and that's a byproduct of the size of the jaws, even though we have a much smaller jaw design than let's say the old Airco or the Marchand style machines that are in the marketplace, where their jaws are significantly bigger. But in this case here, we do show you in our operating manual where you can actually uh, sand back the edges on the bottom jaws and create a radiusing edge into the jaw face. And because we produce so much amount of force with this style of machine, the small amount of, of actual gripping area of the jaw is an intangible when it comes to actual losing or loss of shrinking force. So, but it does give you the ability then with the higher crown in it to allow you to even flow in over these deeper panels where here you would have to come in from both edges to get into the center, in this case, of the well joint. And that's only because of the size. Just imagine a bigger jaw, how much even less limited that style would be. So the nice two feature of having the quick release or the short stroke design here is now I can set and I can bump the machine and get the same amount of force across an entire surface edge. So I'm not pushing more force here and less force there. I get a little tired, I don't put as much force and all of a sudden this way here I get a much more balanced approach and always historically with this type of shrinking, mechanical shrinking, one of the real goals is, is to make sure that you get more activations and contacts in the surface in a larger area so you get a much more uniform flow of the, the, the actual shrinking or stretching process. You have much more control of how the, the panel moves relative to that. So look a little bit at the stand. The Dagger Tools design stand is pretty robust. We've been doing this for a long period of time, so we really understand how much and how little displacement the stand can actually have, and it, its effects on how much it displaces or allows you to put load actually on the forming uh, the jaws themselves. So we have a fairly uh, aggressively built floor design. It can be bolted to the floor if that's what you desire. We do put these uh, roll up caster so you can tilt the machine over and roll it to the end of the garage or put it away and take it out when you need it, take it over to a job. Our push rod design that actually activates the lever is fully adjustable and we have these very unique quick release uh, uh, clevises on it so it makes it easy to open or close the machine. By and large for most of our users that are going to be in that 16 to 20 uh, gauge range, they're not going to really have to start with an adjustment. The adjustments are more practical or more advisable for our roof 
uh, roofing type customers that do metal roofing and, and, and that type of ornamental work, where they might be in the 24, 25, and 26 gauge air area, where then closing up the gap relative to stroke may be beneficial to get the maximum amount of force or enough force out of the machine to do what they want it to do. Um, from that standpoint there, we'll jump over and we'll do a little bit of sample checking and we're going to start with some 19 gauge. In this case we'll go with 19 gauge uh, angles. And again the goal is whenever we're in, uh, in a shrinking mode, in this case, we want to try to do our shrinks overlapping and interconnecting and we want to try to concentrate in the same amount of forces in the the forming zone, whatever that forming zone in the relativity is. So we'll get a little feel here. We're not going to use a lot of force. We're not going to exert a lot of force. But you can see how quickly on this 20 gauge we can rapidly turn that edge. And I am not using a lot of force at this point. We go over and we'll grab our straight edge. We'll get a feel for how much we've moved that metal and how quickly. And we're going to jump over to the flat sheet. One of the things that we have uh, taught our students over the years and users of the machine is we tend to like a diamond interlocking type of patterning work where we actually start and we can vary. The one thing about this machine because of the depth we can go in a little bit, we can go in medium, we can go in a lot. And that's, your, that's just a consideration you have. So normally we start with a couple of shrinks here, overlapping, and then we'll create another row. We'll enlarge it to three, then four, and so on as we work to the edge. We can start with lighter and work to heavier. We can start with lighter and stay with lighter. Um, I don't know if there's many situations where we'd be heavier out here and go lighter, but uh, you have all those options available to you. One point is just to keep in mind that whenever you do mechanical shrinking and or stretching, you're pulling metal from other zones of the panel. So what that means is that if I have shape already put into this part of the panel, when I start to do my edge work or pulling into my edge, I'm going to pull shape out of the adjoining area. So if there's less metal here versus in this area of the panel. It might not be as pronounced here as it is up here, but either way, it's going to happen. So sometimes the legacy uh, uh, people have said that you can shrink up a panel to sh create a shape. Generally speaking, out here, when you shrink in a uh, edge area, the shrinking out here still is going to allow this edge to pull over, but it's going to cause this edge to stay this area to stay fairly flat. It may even dish in in some cases. So keep that in mind when you think on that purpose. So we'll work this surface here. So we'll start up here. We're gonna get light pressure. And I always tell people on our students, if you see grab marks from the jaws, it's working. We'll just keep expanding that area. And again, we're interlocking in three directions. Keep working and just expanding that diamond a little bit bigger each time. We're not using a lot of force right now. And as we work up to the edge. And as we see, we get into just a with. So we can quickly see how quickly that flat sheet and how much shape we added to that sheet and how much it changed in two directions. And that's very light force. And then again depending on the shape and where we want to go with the surface we would then interlock another one and in all honesty we could, we could come back and uh, we could put another one here Another one here, another one here, and we can continue to work that surface depending on how much shape we need, how tight we need to bring that in. So we're going to do the same thing functionally wise. We're going to jump over to 16 gauge. Again, the same thing here. We're going to go and start out with a 16 gauge angle. And 
We're going to interlock our forming zone. Make sure that our shrinks are on top of each other. And we can see, by grabbing our straight edge again, we can see how quickly we can, we can inter, create an inside curve, in this case, on this piece of angle. So we're gonna jump over this 16 gauge flat stack. And, and again, we're gonna use basically the same condition and still diamond it. It could be diamonds, it could be triangulation. And again, in some cases, you could you are more than capable of coming in and interlocking secondarily in some of these areas. But we'll go ahead and we'll do a single zone. And like I said, because of the depth of the machine, you can get quite deep in there. That deeper than uh, there really isn't any machine you're going to get any deeper in in a manual machine worldwide. So we'll come into our machine. We're going to take that center diamond. Same thing. Start a couple of. Um, then interlock another row of three, four, five, and right until we work out to the edge. And we're not going to put a lot of shape, a lot of force. a little bit more aggressive uh, uh, requirement but you can see how quickly on that even the 16 gauge we were able to reset that surface in two directions on a flat sheet so that gives you a little feel for the capabilities of this style of uh, forming machine we at dagger have been making a, a shrinker for over 15 years now have a couple of different models. The SHO2 style machine is what we currently produce. We do make a bench machine that uh, bench activated. It doesn't use the single piece of lever. It's a two piece lever design and a hand lever. Obviously here, because we get a higher mechanical advantage, we can produce more force than we can with the same, everything else being the same in the head. And of course we do lose a little, you lose a little bit of transmissibility of force in a two-piece lever design opposed to the single. So yes, you can still get 16 gauge out of the bench machine, but you'll work at it uh, significantly harder. So there are some definite advantages to the foot activated machine. And of course, your hands are free and you can get a much bigger panel and piece in there. So we're very pleased here over the years that we've been able to continue to make this machine in the good old USA. And uh, even more proudly, it's all made here in our home state of Michigan. And uh, we, uh, we believe strongly in the machine. It's very robust, um, hundreds of units in the marketplace. Um, they generally are gonna be a lifetime machine. Don't require a lot of maintenance. Um, jaw maintenance will be your, your number one factor over the life of the machine. You might have to replace the jaws once, twice, depending on how well you take care of the machine. We can provide you with a good operating manual and instruction sheet and booklet. And uh, we think you'll be very happy with this style of machine. So we uh, appreciate you taking the time today to visit with us here at our Dagger Tools classroom and look forward to seeing you at a show or online somewhere down the road.